Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Christopher Colbert. I am the chair of CME for the American College of Osteopathic Emergency Physicians. I'm also the co-chair for our October virtual conference in which we have amazing presenters. In fact, one of these presenters are with us right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Richard Cantor. Okay, that's that's creepy. All right. Um, so greetings from my quarantine. Um, I'm in my sunroom in Syracuse, which is an oxymoron. It's not that sunny. Uh, and um, I want to, first of all, thank every one of you for what you do every day. And uh, keep it, keeping it very real. I know what you do. And uh, I applaud you like everyone else should. So thank you. Um, this meeting is one of my favorites. I'm sorry we can't be together because the, we feed off each other interpersonally. We're emergency medicine providers. We, we respond to each other physically, verbally, ophthalmologically. Um, so we're going to do our best to convey information in something of a stimulatory manner. So I'm very happy to be here. I appreciate that. Um, Richie, give us some insight on what you're going to discuss in October. Well, for the audience, Chris and I have been discussing what we should talk about. <laughs> uh, you know, I've been doing this way too long. And, um, you know, emergency medicine has evolved over the past three decades into an evidence-based practice, subspecialty with the, the respect it should get. And most of what I talk about is either case-driven or evidence-based driven. Because no longer does somebody just ask a simple question, just tell me what to do. It, nobody's doing that anymore, thank God. It's, why am I doing that? Should I be doing that? Why is he doing that? Why is she doing that? So we talked over what to talk about. And what I do every year for uh, the American College of Emergency Physicians is the literature review, where I, am, I read everything that came out in a year, everything. I try to hope I have like a greatest hits thing to put together for people. And you know, not every year is a winner. It's almost like you know, the last three years of the Trump administration. But um, the reality, I'm sure I'm going to get some negative feedback for that. But the reality is what Chris and I came up with is I'm going to talk about uh, probably five or six advances over the last three or four years with evidence-based backup that really changed what you do or validates what you do or gives you a new approach to what you do. And it's going to be real life stuff. Um, we'll try to keep it light and not drone on about here's another article, here's another article, but it'll be more like here's another clinical problem. Are we in the dark or in the light? I like that. I like that. Now, our viewers want to know, Richie, you are on an island, millions of, while, millions of miles away from civilization. You can only have three restaurants provide food to you on that island. What three restaurants are those going to be? That's a great question. Um, you know, I could just riff and say McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King, but... The reality is um, I travel a lot and let's go through places everyone should go if we had a life and we could travel, but to get delivery and it would be the ultimate Grubhub, it would have to come by air transport. Uh, number one is um, there's an Italian bistro in, in Rome that makes the best spicy gnocchi you've ever had in your life and it'll change your life with uh, fried eggplant. That's number one. If we're going to go red sauce. Uh, if we're going to go meat, hands down. Uh, my wife found this. We went to Portugal with my kids a couple years back. My kids are grown, but we all went. There's a town in Portugal that is the most famous town in the world for roast suckling pig. Now for the vegetarians and the vegans in the group, I have no empathy for you. So close your eyes. This town is actually called Melhada, M-E-A-L-H-A-D-A, -A -A, Melhada. And if you drive into it, there's an archway with pigs on it in stone. And there are four or five competing restaurants where they serve roast suckling pig. I took my daughters there who are much healthier than me. And uh, they all, oh, we don't want pig, you know, whatever. We had four pigs. So that would be the second restaurant. And the third is a stall in um in Xi'an in China an outside like a food truck scenario with the most amazing roast uh, you can see the theme here 
roast pork I've ever seen in my life, uh, cured and whatever. But answer 3B besides that one is there's a bakery, there's a French bakery in um, Montreal, actually, uh, near Montreal in Tremblant that makes all the pastries in the world, you know, besides croissant, shoe paste, they make everything. That's what I would have. Okay, all right. That was a really in detail answer, I like that. So, and finally, here we go. If you could be anything, anything in the world, other than a brilliant physician, other than that, what would you be? I'd be, I'd be a cook and a baker, I almost am. I, I, it's not a hobby with me, I'm, a, I'm nearly, professionally trained. Uh, the only thing that's getting me through this quarantine, besides my wife, thank God, is uh, I cook and bake every day. And um, my food bills have actually gone up during the quarantine because I take food around Syracuse and deliver it like Meals on Wheels. You know, I'm thinking of opening a food truck that's sort of socially conscious, which combines meals with immunizations. So you can buy like a plate like Prevnar and Paella. Or, okay. yeah, hib and hummus, you know, that thing. But I, I, I would be a cook or a baker. Nice comment. So what's the last thing you baked? The last thing you baked? I baked yesterday. I baked uh, the best English muffins you've ever had in your life. Three-day rise, fermented dough. Um, you know, when you're doing nothing, you got a lot of time. And uh, I've really gotten into fermented doughs, sourdoughs, things like that. But I really, I make pastries and cooking. My wife's very healthy, so... Um, I'll, I say, what do you want to eat? You know, and I'll make something I've never made before. Cookie, anybody knows this. I'm sure you cook as well if you have any time. Cooking's fun if you have the time. I like, ladies and gentlemen, the emergency medicine physician, the baker, the cook. And Dr. the immunizations. Don't forget the immunizations. <laughs> <laughs> and the immunizations as well. Richard, thanks a lot. I appreciate yeah. this. this is good I stuff. look forward, forward to, to the meeting. Um, again, everybody just... Uh, maintain what you're doing and get through this and uh you know do what we always do in emergency medicine it's a simple job hello i'm so and so how can i help you that's what we do don't overcomplicate it but i wish everyone good health thanks for i this. appreciate that thank you